This video is about energy levels in an atom. We'll begin with energy level basics and then discuss transitions between energy levels. Let's start with the basics. You already know that atoms consist of a positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electrons. The nucleus contains positively charged protons and uncharged neutrons. For the explanation here, we'll rely on the planetary model of an atom. In this model, the electrons orbit the nucleus, similarly to how planets orbit the Sun. Of course, this is a simplified model, but it will help us understand energy levels. Just as different planets are in different orbits around the Sun, electrons can be in different orbits around the nucleus. These orbits are called energy levels. At different orbits or energy levels, electrons have different amounts of energy. The simplest atom is the hydrogen atom. It is made up of a proton and an electron. Let's examine the energy levels in a hydrogen atom. One way to picture the energy levels or orbits is like this. The nucleus is represented by the black dot and the five dashed circles represent the five energy levels or orbits in the hydrogen atom. These energy levels are simply named as first, second, third, fourth and fifth energy levels. Even though we often think about energy levels as orbits, energy levels are usually represented like this. They are labeled as n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3 and so on. As we mentioned, at different energy levels, Electrons have different amounts of energy. Let's add these energy amounts to our diagram. Since we are dealing with very small amounts of energy, the unit we use here is the electron volt. We learned about the electron volt in subtopic 5.1. The first energy level, where n is equal to 1, is also called the ground state. When an electron moves from the ground state to another energy level, we say that the electron becomes excited. Therefore, the second energy level, where n is equal to 2, is called the first excited state, the third energy level is called the second excited state, and so on. A key point here is that electrons have to be at one of these energy levels and have to have the specific amount of energy of the given level. So, for example, an electron in a hydrogen atom can only take on one of the five energy values that you see on the diagram. It cannot take on an energy value between these five energy levels, so for example, you won't find an electron in a hydrogen atom with an energy value of, for example, negative 9.8 electron volts or negative 2.3 electron volts. Therefore, we say that energy levels in an atom are quantized. Next, let's discuss how electrons transition between different energy levels. Let's return to the hydrogen atom energy level diagram. Electrons often transition between these energy levels. They can move from a lower to a higher or from a higher to a lower energy level. We use arrows to show these transitions. For example, an electron transition from the first to the third energy level so from the ground state to the second excited state, can be shown like this. A transition from a higher to a lower energy level can be shown like this. You have probably noticed that energy values on this diagram are negative. This is because electrons must receive energy in order to move from a lower to a higher energy level. Moreover, in order for an electron to move to a higher energy level, energy must be transferred to the electron in one discrete amount. This amount must be equal to the difference between the energy values of the two energy levels. We'll see an example in a moment to explore this further. The energy needed for the transition to happen is often transferred to the electron when the atom absorbs electromagnetic radiation. We learned in topic 4 that electromagnetic radiation, for example light, is treated as a wave in some situations. An interesting property of electromagnetic radiation is that in some other situations, 
It can be treated as a collection of particles. These particles are called photons. Therefore we can say that electromagnetic radiation is composed of photons. These photons carry a certain amount of energy. The idea that electromagnetic radiation can be treated as both a wave and a collection of particles is called wave-particle duality. We won't explore this concept here in more detail. For now, we just need to know that electromagnetic radiation is composed of particles called photons and that these photons carry a certain amount of energy. The energy carried by a photon depends on the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. This energy can be calculated by using one of these two formulae. Here are the variables that are present in these formulae. It is easy to connect these two formulae. We just have to use the wave speed equation from topic 4, which says that speed is equal to frequency times wavelength, in other words, c is equal to f times lambda. Rearranging this equation for f and substituting in the first formula will lead to the second formula. I won't go into the details of this working here. Instead, let's use the energy level diagram on the left to see how to apply these formulae. In this example, we will calculate the frequency and the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation that will cause an electron in the hydrogen atom to transition from the ground state to the second excited state. On the diagram, this transition is shown by the blue arrow. Let's start by finding the energy that must be transferred to the electron. To do this, we'll find the difference between the two energy level values. So we get that E is equal to negative 1.51 minus negative 13.58 electron volts. This gives us 12.07 electron volts. So this is the energy that must be transferred to the electron. In other words, the energy carried by the incident photon. To calculate the frequency, we'll rearrange the first equation, which gives us F equals to E over H. We have to convert the energy from electron volts into joules. To do this, we'll multiply the electron volt value, so 12.07, by 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. We have seen this conversion in subtopic 5.1. This is divided by Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34. Carrying out this calculation gives us approximately 2.91 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz. To calculate the wavelength, we can either use the second formula here or the wave speed equation. I will use the wave speed equation because the working will be a bit shorter. So we get that lambda is equal to c over f. Substituting gives us 3 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by 2.91 times 10 to the power of 15. The result of this calculation is approximately 1.03 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters, which we can also express as 103 nanometers. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. We began by learning the basic concepts about atomic energy levels. We saw that atoms consist of a positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electrons. In the planetary model of an atom, which is a simplified model to help us understand energy levels, the electrons orbit the nucleus similarly to how planets orbit the Sun. These electrons can be in different orbits around the nucleus. We added that these different orbits are called energy levels, that at different energy levels electrons have different amounts of energy, and that electrons have to be at one of these energy levels and have to have the specific amount of energy of the given level. Electrons cannot have an energy value that falls between the energy levels. This means that energy levels in an atom are quantized. Finally, we learned how an energy level diagram looks like. Next, we moved on to transitions between energy levels. 
we established that energy values on an energy level diagram are negative because electrons must receive energy in order to move to a higher energy level. We added that in order for an electron to move to a higher energy level, energy must be transferred to the electron in one discrete amount. Such an energy transfer often happens when electromagnetic radiation that is incident on the atom is absorbed by the atom. We briefly mentioned the wave-particle duality of electromagnetic waves and established that electromagnetic radiation is composed of particles called photons. These photons carry a certain amount of energy, which depends on the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. This frequency and the wavelength of the radiation can be calculated by using these formulae. Here are the variables that are present in the formulae. Finally, we work through an example to calculate the frequency and the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation that is required for a specific transition in the hydrogen atom. During this example, we learned that energy level transitions can be shown by arrows on an energy level diagram like this. The blue arrow means a transition from a lower to a higher energy level, a process during which the electron gains energy, while the red arrow shows a transition from a higher to a lower energy level, where the electron loses energy. This completes our discussion of energy levels in an atom. In the next video, we'll learn about emission spectra.